Hey, Internet. Eric here. Well, it's Bloody Sunday again. Um, if you don't know what that concept is, I've done quite a few of these. Um, but if you're new to the channel, uh, Bloody Sunday is a concept that was created on YouTube where every Sunday you create, or you create, every Sunday you discuss a specific death from a movie, TV show, cartoon, what have you. Um, doesn't have to be bloody, even though it is uh, Bloody Sunday. Uh, you discuss a death from one of those and just say why it kind of left an impression with you. Um, <laughs> I did just say it doesn't have to be bloody, but my choice this week is definitely bloody. Um, I, I'm going to talk about a death from Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Now, if you're new to my channel and you obviously haven't seen Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and I'm discussing a death, I've always hated how they have a picture from Part 5 in the back of Part 3. Um, anyways... Obviously, if the concept of this video is talking spe specific deaths, Jesus, in a in a movie, and you haven't seen it, there are spoilers. Now, I have discussed this film uh, on my channel before. Um, go ahead and to the go to the Nightmare on Elm Street three playlist. But uh, I didn't really, I don't remember if I discussed uh, a spe this specific death in length. Um, if I did, well, then <laughs> you get to hear about it again. Basic plot of this one is. Um, the last surviving children of the parents that torched Freddy Krueger alive are now together at Weston Hills. It's this um, mental ward, I guess. Um, and uh, they meet up with Nancy Thompson, the, the lone survivor of part one, to take down Freddy once and for all. And obviously since this is part three and there are numerous sequels, they fail. However, um, the death I want to discuss here, the one that my favorite death and the one everyone always seems to remember after the TV kill is Philip's death. Um, a lot of people talk about and remember the TV kill with Jennifer because it's where Freddy does the, or he re, he does his uh, iconic welcome to primetime bitch line. I've always liked Philip's death and Philip is, um, he's a kid who sleepwalks and his thing is he likes to make puppets um, but they won't give him a knife because he might cut his wrist, obviously. Um, so he does his best making his own little marionette puppets. And his death is, uh, he falls asleep, and since I mentioned he sleepwalks, that's what happens. Freddy gets to him in his dream and makes him sleepwalk. But what's cool is how the dream first starts. Uh, Philip's asleep on his bed, and we cut to, um, one of his marionette puppets. And in a really cool stop-motion effect, the, the face of the puppet, which is made out of clay morphs into Freddy's face and we have a hand morph into a Freddy hand and blades come out of the fingertips so that's cool and some more stop motion animation Freddy cuts down his strings and he's free and he slowly walks over to Philip's bed and then Philip wakes up and he sees Freddy grow turn normal and grow to normal size and what is great about this scene is we just see Freddy with his glove extended he points to like the corner of the uh, of the, of the screen you know and we just hear, we see him go like this and pull back and you hear a whoosh noise. So it's all sound and that's what's really cool. And you see the actor playing Philip just kind of, you know, wince when that happens. He does it four times. So you're wondering what the hell is he doing? And then, and then you see Philip, full body, and he's got these long lines, long slits down his forearms and down his legs. And then suddenly the wounds open up super fast and his tendons shoot to the ceiling and uh, so obviously he's being puppeted and uh, Kincaid his his roommate just thinks he's sleepwalking and um, he ends up going to the top of the bell tower or I don't fucking know just a tower that's part of the of the hospital mental ward whatever you want to fucking call it um, after a really Stupid cheesy effect where he just walks through the walls. It's I don't know what year this was 86 I'm gonna assume 86 87. I don't know But um, that effect sucked, but what's cool is Joey the mute the mute of the group sees it and um, he, he wakes up uh, I Can't think of the kid's name, but the the paralyzed kid and of course the paralyzed kid can't go get help so he is put by the window to try to scream for Philip to stop and the mute boy Joey goes and he has a food tray the nurse doesn't listen to him so he bangs the food tray on all the doors 
to get the other kids to find out what the fuck's going on. They're all screaming for Philip, and when they look up top, they just see Philip, you know, standing at the top of the tower. But in Philip's dream, he's still being marionetted by Freddy. And what I didn't mention is when Philip is slowly walking. I mean, first off, we have these this weird sound effect. This it sounded like it sounds kind of like a weird heartbeat, but um, we get close up shots of uh. The, the, the tendons coming out of Philip's arms. But what really gets me is we have this close-up shot. You know, first off, we see the floor. We see the blood drip. And then we get this close-up shot, close shot of, like, Philip's left foot come into frame. And the top of his foot is open. And the tendons are just to the top of the screen. And it's really, really gross and painful looking. So that, uh, and that mixed with, Phillips acting later on when he's at the top of the bell tower really hits. So that's a really that's a really good mixture. And what I was saying is, you know, the kids just see Philip at the top of the tower. But what Philip sees is his tendons holding him like this. And at the top, right above, we had this huge image of Freddy behind the tower. And he's got Philip's tendons tied to his fingers. So he's like messing with Philip. And then, you know, just playing with Philip, moving his fingers, this and that, as Philip is in pain. And then suddenly, Freddy takes his glove, whoosh, cuts the strings. Philip falls from the top of his of the tower to his death off screen. But it's a great scream. It's a great fall. It's a great reaction from the kids watching him fall. And then some of them wince, close their eyes. Patricia Arquette screams her head off. She's a great fucking screamer in this movie. Um, and then, of course, like, you know, Freddy's M.O., it's, it's uh, blamed as a suicide. So, yeah. This week's Bloody Sunday, Philip's death from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Um, that's it. Thank you for watching, short and sweet. I'm going to have some content coming up. I've just been so busy with work and everything. Like I've been saying lately, I've been helping out with some podcasts that aren't just my own. But um, I'm delving into the Wishmaster series. Um, I will talk about that soon. Um among some other things. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. Comment below. All that usual spiel. Um, if you are a person who does videos, do a Bloody Sunday entry. Because it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm just talking. I Normally my videos are, if you're new to this channel, 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes. This can be done in under 8. You know, for me. That's, that's saying I'm a, a bunch. You can make it as short or sweet as you want. But um... I guess that's all I got to say is like, subscribe, all that crap. Participate in Bloody Sunday if you want. That'd be cool. Get this concept going again. Um, cheers. I don't have... Here. Here's an old beer can. Cheers. And uh, never sleep again. I don't know how to end this. So, see you next Sunday. If not before. Whatever. I'm stupid. Later.